Hello, BookTube, and welcome to your Daily Penguin. This is our waddle through my Penguin Classic wall, and we are slowly reaching the end of the first narrow bookcase. <laughs> we went through all the ancient world. We're not going to encounter much of the ancient West, the Gre Greece and Rome, uh, at any point after this. Uh, there's still a great deal of the ancient East to do all of it. In fact, we haven't touched it. Uh, and we went through... Uh, the Bible and the Psalms and whatnot. We went through uh, um, Old English and the the long Dark Ages, and now we're we are roughly we have been doing the uh, the the Renaissance, the Long Renaissance, the Northern Renaissance, and now we today we are in the early 17th century uh, uh, with the author George Herbert, who was the the rector of a tiny church and wrote. Uh, Christian religious ditties <laughs> in his in his spare time, and in 1633, when he was still comparatively a young man, uh, he knew that he was dying. He could he could tell that he was dying and that he wasn't going to live out the year, and he didn't. And early in 1633, he asked he sent the whole body of his writing, most of it, all the stuff that he had at his fingertips, to a close friend of his. And unlike so many people in literary history, some of which we've seen, some of which, some of whom we will see. He did not instruct that friend to destroy that manuscript. He said he instructed that friend to either destroy it or publish it. Leave it up to them, because you're not around, and you don't get to claim things from beyond the grave. And, of course, his, his friend read these things and thought they should be published. And they have, in the intervening centuries, achieved a kind of... I hesitate to use the word cult status because uh, not only is it dicey when you're referring to a big religion, but also because it's a, it's canonical. Herbert is canonical. His, uh, his poetry is studied in colleges all over the world. Uh, nevertheless, <laughs> there's a certain kind of cult nature about the people who really, really prize him. I think you can tell from this video that I don't. I am not one of those people who really, really prizes him. I don't think much of what he wrote rises above a particularly anagrammy Hallmark card. <laughs> that is going to cause Herbert fans to just go nuts in outrage. And I understand that. I could be wrong. Definitely, I could be wrong about this author. He might just be playing fourth dimensional chess and, I'm, and his opponent is God and I'm not involved in the conversation. That could easily be true. Uh, but one way or another, uh, I like him only well enough so that I would be well suited with simply the, the quotations, the passages from him in the Oxford Book of English verse, which I often pull down off the shelf and which for some reason is not a Penguin classic. The, the Quiller Cooch version of the Oxford Book of English Verse, one of the greatest anthologies of all time, is not a Penguin classic as far as I know, nor is the Helen Gardner, which is the, was a revised edition of the Oxford Book of English Verse that I actually like more than, than Quiller Cooch. Uh, that, that a little bit surprises me. A little bit surprised, Omissions like that a little bit surprise me. It surprises me that the Shakespeare First Folio is not a Penguin classic. It surprises me that the, uh, that the, Oxford Book of English Verse is not a Penguin classic, unless they are, and I just don't know it, but one way or another, uh, that much George Herbert would be fine by me. <laughs> that is absolutely not the case with the name with whom he is usually paired, and that is John Donne. We will get to John Donne, and that is absolutely not the case with Donne. I can't live without Dunn, and I need all of it, and I want as many editions as I can get. It's not true with Herbert, which makes today's Penguin Classics a little bit of a confusing, because I did use the plural. Today is two Penguin Classics. Two different collections, annotated collections, of Herbert's complete poetry. <laughs> this one was edited by John Tobin in the 1990s, and this one was edited by John Drury and Victoria Mole, M-O-U-L, in 2015. Now, they both have hundreds of pages of notes. They are both exhaustive, completely exhaustive, long introductions, loving annotations, and uh, very careful provenance of the text themselves that are printed. We know, we know Herbert mostly from one book, so it's not hard to nail down a real good provenance and then just annotate the crap out of it. And that's what both of these editions do. 
And I was going down, I'm, I'm examining these shelves, and, and uh, there are some parts, I admit, there are some parts of my Penguin Classic wall that are more visited than others, and obviously this isn't one of them, because I don't know why I have even one Penguin Classic complete George Herbert poetry, much less two separate books two, by two different teams of scholars. I don't know why that would be. It shouldn't be. Uh, but I have mentioned before on this, this little march of the Penguins that uh, I am using this not only as an opportunity to talk about all these books with you, but also as an opportunity to uh, really take a long, evaluative look at these books. And maybe even Heresy of Heresies do a little pruning. <laughs> maybe do a little pruning. I guarantee you. Uh, first of all, I would only need to keep one of these scholarly editions of Herbert, even if I want to keep, even if I want to have a scholarly complete Herbert, I would only need one. I don't need two. I'm not a Herbert fanatic at all. But if I were to, let's say, to get rid of both of them, well, that's, that's a sizable amount of room that is then opened up on the Penguin Wall. You cannot tell me that there aren't Penguin classics that I don't have that I want more than I want these that would fit in that space. And the same is true for everything else. Everything, every uh, book that I'm encountering where I'm saying, okay, well, this is fun to talk about with you, but why do I have this? Now, this is, these are both, I have actually gone through both of these. Penguin sent me this one comparatively recently. Uh, and I got this one uh, with my own money <laughs> years and years and years ago. And I have, been, I have gone through both of them. I have, I have read right down into the nitty gritty of the notes on both of them. They're, I don't actually have a preference. They both do very, very parallel work. Uh, but I, I don't foresee... <laughs> I, don't, I, I mean, these are both examples of what, we, what we've talked about on this channel, especially lately, of where Penguin manages to get their hands on a truly great scholarly edition of someone. We've seen that for other... Uh, poets tend to bring it out in, in people. And we're going to see a lot more of that. And I've also mentioned that there are some scholarly editions of some poets that Penguin doesn't use, and I wish they did. And these, these are both magnificent scholarly editions of this one poet who wrote one particular kind of poetry in his spare time for a few years, and then he died, and it's in one book, and here we go. And the introduction, I think, to the first one, to the earlier volume, mentions that there are three main reasons. The author of the introduction is a Herbert fan. I don't think he's intending to be damning, and yet in his introduction he mentions that there are three main reasons why people tend to read the poetry of George Herbert. One is that they share his Christian faith. The second is that they used to share his Christian faith, and so his Christian faith is nostalgic for them. And the third reason is that they love to prize apart and... and analyze the various metrical manipulations that he does. These, his, his little ditties are extremely, can be extremely metrically dense with all of the games that he's playing, the, the uh, acrostic games that he's playing with, with numbers and stresses and whatnot. And I would agree that those are the three main reasons why people read this author. Most people read this author. And I want you to notice that all, none of those reasons have anything to do with literary uplift. <laughs> none, of, none of them have to do with enjoying these things as poems, as literature, at all. And you could not, you would not need to go far in readers of John Donne to find that that is not the case there. I mean, with Donne, yes, a lot of people read him because they share his Christian faith. With Donne, yes, a lot of people read him because they once shared his Christian faith and have lost it, but they, they like the nostalgia of his poems. And with Donne, yes, oh yes, there are a lot of people who read him for the the metrical and rhetorical games that he plays, for the way that you can prize out these things like clockwork. Uh, but I would argue, I know, I know this is causing howls in some corners, I would argue that with Herbert, that's pretty much the whole ballgame, those three things. And with Dunn, there's the extra element, the element that those three things don't mention, which is that Dunn is stunningly great. And I don't think Herbert is. So why I have two annotated editions of this author, I have no idea. I should have neither. Um, now that I've read them both, uh, I, they should go. I, of course, nothing's going anywhere at the moment because all bookstores are closed and uh, all deliveries are done and all that sort of stuff. But still, I bet that when all of this Penguin, with this, this penguin tour is over... I will have amassed a fairly large pile of Penguin Classics that I no longer want. 
and that will clear the room for Penguin Classics that I do want. I'd be willing to bet that will be true. We shall see. There'll be more Penguin Classics, of course. <laughs> There'll be more of them will come down the line as well. Uh, but anyway, that's your Penguin Classic for today. We jumped a little bit forward in time. I imagine we'll be going back uh, from 1633. 1633 is fairly late. We'll, I think we'll be going. We'll be going back in time. This is not an, uh, a rigorous scholarly organization of these books, nor is it a rigorous scholarly tour of these things at all. This is a highly personal tour of my Penguin Classics. So that's your Penguin Classic for today. Not one, but two scholarly editions of the complete poetry of George Herbert. Latin translations, I think one of these volumes, or maybe both of them, have uh, some, some prose works, all the poetry, tons of notes, all the gold you could eat. <laughs> so, so there you go. If you, if you love George Herbert, you're probably going to want both these volumes to cross-reference them and take make the most of the various scholarly opinions good good for you more power to you so i'm gonna wrap this up for now but i'll be back thank you booktube